everyone. Happy Tuesday. How are you? So we have a progress report. I just completed another milestone since having cataract surgery in February and March. I've been blogging. The blog is back up and running. It has a new look. It still has many, many, many more blogs and new content to come. Um, it's a work in progress, as am I. Um, and because I wasn't able to see clearly, I'm way backlogged. But I did it. I finally just sat down and wrote the blog that I knew I needed to. Um, as I had mentioned on here a couple episodes ago, I hadn't, I mean, I have more migraine blogs than I had realized when I actually went down to look through them. But I never really went in detail about my day-to-day -day experience in quite some time, in, in several years. Probably the last one featured um, me talking about weaning off my uh, medications and things like that. Um, in the last video posted last time, um, in the uh, description, I, I put a link to some of those blogs in case you're interested in reading them. But I felt because I had been MIA on my blog for so long and that not everyone that follows my blog necessarily watches these videos or follows me on social media, they might not know why I had been MIA for so long. And even though I could pick right up where I left off technically, I felt like I owed it to my readers to be truly transparent and really for myself. I felt like it was an important thing to mark a period in time that it was over. And um, something about that freed me to write. I felt like I couldn't move on until I shared that post. So I did. And I had been thinking about what I wanted to say for a long time because it was a long time coming. But I just couldn't get myself to sit down and do it. I don't know. I had nervous energy about it. I felt a lot of anxiety about it, which is strange, right? It's the thing that I'm the most passionate about. It's the reason that I'm sitting here with you now. It's led to all the other things that I want to do and taught myself and became good at. But I couldn't reconnect with my first love. You know that expression, it's like riding a bicycle, that once you've done it, you never really forget? Completely true. So on a Saturday afternoon when... I found myself sitting alone in my living room in this very spot. It was bright and sunny out. I had a candle going. It was a nice breeze. You know, there was just a vibe. My writing vibe, apparently. And I had just come into the living room with a cup of coffee, which I do very often. And I sat down on my computer and I was in the middle of, like, doing 17 things. Reading, watching some, probably a true crime documentary. And I just had this urge, this feeling in the pit of my stomach, it's very hard to explain, where like, it's like a combination of adrenaline, anxiety, and like, an urge. And I just knew that I had to flip open my laptop and just start typing. And that's what I did. And I have to tell you, after the first few moments of just hearing nothing, literally nothing in my house, but the sound of my fingers on the keyboard, I was very overcome. I didn't cry, surprisingly enough. But I was just overcome. It was like, it was like reconnecting with a lost love. And you forgot how sweet their kiss was. This is the same thing. Only I forgot, although of course I've used my computer many times since then, that feeling, that rush that I get when I just start typing without thinking. And that's how I've always written. I don't have, I mean, I know what I'm writing about and I do some research if I need facts. But other than that, I don't really think about it a whole lot, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't write fiction, so that's not a problem. But in my storytelling, I just really think of the events, how they happened, or what I want to say, or what I felt, and I just start typing. Sometimes it's not even that deep. Sometimes I literally just put my fingers on the keyboard, and I go. And I, I thought this was going to be such a super short blog. And of course, well, if you just want to sum up why I had been MIA and surgery and everything. A little bit of background was needed. Um, but I found myself just pouring my soul into my blog. And with every word, I was typing literally so fast that when I went back to proofread it, I had to do it so many times because there were so many misspellings because I just couldn't get it out fast enough. 
this is what I used to love the most about my blog and about my writing and writing in general was that my mind always worked faster than my fingertips, always. And I had forgotten that. And I'd forgotten that passion for my writing because it was so bothersome now. It, it had become such a act, angst in me because every time I tried to do something for my blog for the last year, especially the last six months prior to surgery, it just reminded me of how much I was... Um, my eyesight was decreasing and how much worse I was getting and the inevitable that was coming and the fear of that and all the things that came with that and stress. And it wasn't fun anymore. And while not all work should be fun, but if you're working, doing something that you love, that the love has to still be there. Otherwise, it's just work. And for that matter, I could do it anywhere. And I... I've gone through this many times in my life, usually because of something health related. My head went caused me many periods to have um, a lot of blank spots on my blog. I would question whether I run to keep doing the blog. I mean, initially years ago, it wasn't because I thought I would be focusing on other writing projects as I feel now, but I felt like it was a source of pain, you know, but it's really bittersweet. It's a bittersweet thing because I have to acknowledge all of those hurts. And even though you've moved past them and progressed in your life, every once in a while you feel a little twinge of it. But it's okay because now there's positive. And so writing my blog again has felt like what I thought was the last milestone really of coming out of eye surgery and recovery. My true proof of recovery, if you will. And I'm surprised to find out that that's not so. That there is a milestone each and every day that I didn't see coming, <laughs> literally. Um, a couple of weeks ago, before I wrote my blog, my mother needed oral surgery. I took it to the dentist, and I was just going to drive around until I had to pick her up. It's a beautiful day. I was out taking some pictures in my beloved Brooklyn because there's always something historic, always something new to see, even if the new is old. It's new to me. And I stopped at a red light. And something felt strange to me, but I couldn't quite figure out what it was. Something was wrong. Was I forgetting something? Was I not paying attention to the road? I couldn't quite wrap my mind around what I was feeling. But I was very aware. I was very heightenedly aware that something was different. And there was a billboard. I wish I had time to take my camera and take a photo of it, but I didn't because I was driving. Um, the sign said something like, have terrible migraines, you need Botox. And it was an advertisement for some doctor's office. And I thought, well, yeah, who are you telling? And then it occurred to me, this was the first time I was driving in a car by myself since I started driving again after getting my, my eye surgery. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. And there were definitely some tears. I controlled myself, but there were definitely some tears. I was overwhelmed, flooded. I've been driving a lot in the last couple of months, but there was always somebody in the car with me. Usually my mother, because she's my life partner in most things I do. And while that was joyful to drive anywhere, you know, I, I had been driving to Manhattan. Um, every time I drive someplace new to an, a relative's house to have a socially distant visit in the yard, anytime I drove some, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I was checking all those boxes where I was driving to. But it never occurred to me to drive alone or like that was a box that I needed to check, that I needed to check. And I really did, because while driving through Starbucks for the first time was a high on its own, alone. Now, I know alone is a difficult thing for a lot of people, but I thrive being alone. I really do. And now, of course, there are days when I want company and interaction and connection and love and like everybody else, but I really do thrive being alone. It might have started out as... There were just things I wanted to do, and slowly I worked my way up from going to the theater alone, to going to dinner alone, to traveling to Europe alone. But I really like myself, and I like being by myself. And most importantly, I'd rather be alone and happy and content than with someone that I'm dragging to these things that aren't enjoying them, that are going to complain, that are going to nitpick. It gives me the freedom to do what I want, when I want, and how I want, and feel how I want about it. And... Just taking a drive, 
grocery shopping alone. Those are part of the reasons, if you recall, I listed I was getting the surgery in the first place, a doctor's appointment, going to the pharmacy alone. All of those things are the reasons that really pushed me over the edge, besides just not being able to see, to get the surgery that wasn't medically necessary, but necessary if you want to feel safe and alive and, you know, live. And I knew all that, but I was still taken back by the driving alone. And I got to tell you, next to sitting here in this spot, that's my new favorite spot. It does something for me. That freedom, that validation that I did the right thing. The confirmation that I needed the surgery and did it. Well, of course, all the evidence was right there in front of me. You know, I had had such a little setback um, in April. My retina looked like it might be detaching. And I was seeing floaters and had been hyper cautious of any new signs because I had to go back to the eye doctor and all of that other stuff put me in a funk. And while I still know I needed the surgery and still glad I did it and every day I'm still seeing something different or new or something that I had forgot that I wasn't missing or details, the driving, the freedom is the ultimate expression of the love that I had for myself to take proper care of myself when I needed to, even though it was hard and scary and everything. And that was really amazing. The picture you're going to see at the tile, the front opening tile of this video, is the picture I took that first day I drove along. It was a mural I happened to pass on some random street. I actually drove back around the block so I could pull up in front of it and get out of the car and, and take the photo. And even though I think the mural is beautiful and has a nice saying, the significance to me is that it was the first day I was driving myself. I needed a memory. For me, having a photo of something, I take so many photos. It's unbelievable. It's proof that it happened. I was there. This happened. Good and bad. Even if I knew I was sick in the photo and I see a vacation where I was just full of sweat and pain and misery, it's still proof that it happened. It's still proof that I accomplished that, that I survived that. But more than anything, you know, a lot of people don't like the way they look in certain photos and they want to throw them out or delete them. I'm not that girl. Sure, I've seen plenty of unflattering photos of myself. But it's more that who I was with and where I was. And sometimes that's the only photo you have of that memory. And for me, they're the most precious memories. And so I really needed to photograph that experience. And for me, that was the best way to do it. It is also the photo that appears on the blog that I then wrote to relaunch my blog as it was. Um, and it will the link to that blog will be in the video description here as well. So you can check it out. In terms of my eye recovery progress since the retina stuff happened. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out a video called I Hate the Eyes a couple of weeks back. Um, it will catch you all up. Um, I still have the floaters. I haven't seen any more flushes of light, thank God, which is apparently a very bad sign. And the fear and the anxiety I had of that happening has calmed down a great deal. I mostly just trying to live that there's been some space since that happened and anytime the fear creeps up or I think I see something different I just try to catch myself I take a deep breath and I don't know literally like force that thought out of it it's just not possible it's not going to happen and that's that and try to just really believe that and will it to be and let it go and that's how I'm dealing with that um, I'm going back to the eye doctor next week, next week, and at that time I'm supposed to see a retina specialist and, you know, quadruple check everything, which I dread and will also enjoy because I'll have some peace of mind and some comfort. Um, so that's that. And hopefully that I can move on to other body parts and my regular maintenance and, you know, normal life things and really put this chapter behind me but able to being able to put this chapter behind me I had to realize that with the driving with the blog I really thought the blog was the last milestone but there are still milestones all of the time which is a good thing it's not a bad thing but I thought that you know there were these I have no idea I didn't count them four to six things that I had to do and then I would be 
me again, the new me, whatever me, and and be right. And it's not that way. There's not a hand, you know, there's so many things I haven't even thought of yet. And I had to realize, or I did realize, that, you know, the video I, I discussed that I was sick, set, sad, sick, and scared, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm stuttering, it was a really emotional video for me. And that was the video I did between eye surgeries. And I was in a really dark emotional place and struggling, and I didn't know why. And I had to accept that I was struggling. And even though it wasn't a major process for other people, it was a major deal for me. And that's what made it significant. And it was okay to truly feel what I was feeling at that moment. You know, we say that a lot, just feel what you're feeling. But we still judge ourselves. We're our worst critics. And I was certainly guilty of all of that until I freed it. And that's how I feel about the milestones. Like, for as many tears as I shed over having to do the surgery and going through the surgery and recovering from the surgery and being afraid that my retina was attached because of the surgery and all of those things, the many, 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 many tears I cried, and they were hundreds of thousands, I guarantee you. That's how many milestones I deserve to have. I have to allow myself to be excited, whether anybody else is or not, doesn't matter. That, hey, I can tell that all of the carpet is different, that I can see the gray hair in my head that everybody else has noticed except me, that I can tweeze my own eyebrows, especially now that the nail salons are closed. Um, all of those milestones are just as righteous as those tears were. And, of course, the milestones are more exciting than the tears, and even the happy tears, that that's, I earned it. And so I've freed myself from thinking that there was a limited amount, a fixed amount of how many happy things or milestones I was allowed to accomplish after the surgery. And so that is truly, truly something. And the other thing I've really been thinking about a lot lately is when you're trying to catch up with someone that knows you've had surgery but doesn't know the specifics and ask like why you had surgery or what happened what do you tell them like I'm in such a different emotional and headspace than I was at any of those points and so much has happened to me to my family to the world that where do you kind of begin I found myself the other day talking to a cousin I hadn't talking talk spoken to I should say on the phone in quite a long time um but through family members had kept up or text messages or whatever and asked so how were you what the hell happened and I found myself in this voice giving her the cliff notes version is what I called it the, the abbreviated version the layout outline and I because it was someone I am close to there were certain moments when I actually was telling the story and I got to the parts because I admitted about the emotional things and I know she doesn't watch the videos but about how dark of a place I was in between surgeries I caught myself reliving it momentarily and that brought up a lot of emotion in my voice and a little tears in my eyes and but then I got back to being this you know there's going to be those emotions you know when you think about the sad times in your life whatever they are the hard times when you think of what you felt like at that moment that's what makes you emotional. It's not that you feel it anymore, but you can remember. You feel sorry for that person, even though it was yourself. And I always allow myself a few moments to grieve for that moment in time, that person, myself, and then move on and go back to what I was doing. Because although it's scabbed, that, you know, that wound is healed, like anything else, when you pick at it, even accidentally or lightly, it's still tender. It's still a soft spot. And because this is not really that far in my past, it's only like three months, two to three months, that it's happening in real time. It's not like other traumas I've discussed here. And so the same when I'm talking off camera. It's not that far in the past. Sure, I've moved on from it and I feel fantastic emotionally and I've recovered because I allowed myself to truly go through it to get to the other side, which is really the only way you can ever go through anything emotionally uh, taxing and um, it's still it's still taking time to process and I'm sure that it will I'm sure that it will be something I carry with me always the experience of it good and bad because there's lessons to be learned in both of those aspects but that's the other thing is like how much detail do you give somebody right because I sound all fine now and unless you really know me or 
I'm speaking to you and you hear my voice, you know, through a text, through an email, through a whatever, it's hard to convey that. And so there's an album Jennifer Lopez did many years ago, and the title was This Is Me, dot, 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 then. And I think of that phrase, like, this was me then. And that's sort of what these videos and my blogs are, well, my blogs are more about what I do, but it's the same thing. It's a moment in time. It's a diary, just in a different format. This is me now, and that was me then. And whatever this is, this at one point in the future will be a then moment also. And so I want to capture them. I want to explain them. I want to sit in my peace, but... I want to really be able to tell my story because I feel like there's obviously value in it and education and it's just really good for me. I am a vocal person and words matter whether I write them or not. But now I know that writing them is also super, super important for me. Um, another milestone as we're wrapping up here is something I'm about to do in the next few minutes and it's something that doesn't get old I mean I haven't been this excited to drive since I was 16 and first got my license and my learner's permit and since I started drinking coffee this is still an exciting thing for me I realized a while ago but hadn't shared with you that I am going to make some coffee and now you know little lines on your coffee pot where you fill the water to how many cups you're making I couldn't see that at all I was filling the coffee pot to however many cups I wanted and pouring it into the uh, craft that way. From the craft into the um, base of the coffee pot, whatever the hell that's called. And even that I was struggling to see. But now I can see it on the actual machine and that's really thrilling. Also for me, I am actually reading the info button and the TV captions. And when movies come up and they put that little either what the people are saying or like the updates at the end of a movie, what's happened to those people since watch a lot of true stories that that is never gets old. Super exciting. Every time it happens, it's like a little gift. So with that being said, I'm going to go make myself yet another cup of coffee simply because I can. So Stay migraine-free, my friends, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.